Shalom, shalom, Yahshua Allah. We're going to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashib, Yahweh Shah, Bahashib Rakadash, which in the Pele Rubu tongues, created the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles, the elders of the Great Millstone. And shalom to you, sister, brother, living is true. And shalom to the brothers and sisters that's listening and studying, show themselves approved. Shalom. I'm about to do a quick follow up on the power outer situation here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This will be like a part two to the surgical strike blackouts lesson I did. And so here we are Saturday, a week later, and majority of the power has been restored to most people. They still got a couple people that I'm looking at this article say that some people don't have power, but everybody I know has power. Uh, most people at my job, um, family, um, the Akim, the Ak has power now. Kadar Sahan, they power is back. And um, just looking at the aftermath of everything that happened during that blackout. You know, there was a, a way for Esau to test the resolve of the American people, specifically here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You know, and um, things that I seen during that blackout was that the two-third Jakes, that, that one week right there, almost pushed him over the top. There are a lot of Jakes I've seen. I've also heard they were fighting over gas pumps because we had we almost had like a gas shortage. Um, there was only a few eateries open, you know, restaurants, fast food places. So people was fighting uh, over spots to get food. And it, it, it was a little bit of chaos, man. There were a lot of wrecks because the traffic lights were out. But pretty much they, they're getting the power restored, but they drug their feet. Like, I heard the governor declared a, a state of emergency, but it didn't look like an emergency. Like, you didn't see too many trucks. Like, I've been living in Tulsa, Oklahoma a long time. And during snowstorms and blizzards, they got the power on quicker. And you see more companies out. It wasn't too many trucks. I seen some from Indiana working on a power line. So I seen some trucks, but it wasn't a lot. They keep saying it's a lot of trucks, but me and Akim don't see a lot of trucks. You know, out here working and restoring power. So, and then like for another example, they said everybody got limbs, drag them to the curve and they'll come by and get the limbs up and, you know, be chipping, throw them in the chipper and be chopping them up. Like they have yet to come in my neighborhood and get these limbs or any neighborhood I've seen for that matter. So Esau is really dragging his feet on this process and that was on purpose to make people angry I think they was hoping for a lot of judgment during that time. And like I say, we, we got to see the effects of that. For one week, that was pretty devastating, y'all, Sharala. So I can only imagine a couple months that would destroy Esau's society as we know it. Because that one week was very intense. And then I look at my op, Kadar Sahan, his, his house lost power. So I had to deal with the elements of having no power, you know, uh, grilling, cooking outside, but he pulled through, you know. So what I got to see and what, what the Most High allowed me to see was the differences between a hopeful elect and a two-third worldly Jake. So I'm going to give you a quick testimony. At my job, there's an old school Jake. He wigged out on another Jake at the job. You know, and like I know how it happened because I had seen it. He was very frustrated because his power had been out. And just like the Akadar Sahans, his power had came on. And I guess they didn't know what they was doing or rate the systems right or maybe transformers were right. As soon as his power came on, the transformer blew and his power went back out. So they pissed him off. So he came to work with an attitude, which made him wig out on another Jake. And he wigged out on some Edomites too. He ended up going home early. But he was just in a very foul, bad mood. He wasn't handling it right. I mean, and he down there picked a drill up, told the Jake that, hey, I'm about, to, I'm about to hurt you if you keep messing with me, you know? So I, I'm seeing things like that. And this happened in my area, you know, my little work area. You know, I know the old school Jake. And I I mean, he he don't believe in the most high. He don't believe in nothing. He, he a very worldly nigga Jake. And you're going to see the effects he about to wig out, like, they had to send him home because he was threatening to hurt somebody at the job. And that's because he said he ain't he ain't better sleep good. His house is hot. Like, he just ran off all, you know, the things that had him bothered. And he, he's about to bug out. Literally about to bug out. Like, people had to stand up 
and separate them because he had grabbed a drill and he, he said he was going to hurt the other Jake because other Jake didn't know dude was in a bad mood and he was messing with him. You know, me, you know us, we, we be observing. I noticed that Jake, like, no mess with him today because he had already told me what, what his problem was. We came, you know, you say, what's up to everybody at work? And um, he was just, like, you know, ranting about how, like, his power was out and they sorry and they ain't hooking the power up and, you know, he said some truthful stuff, and but he wasn't handling it right at all. He had a very bad day. So I'm seeing that from that Jake. Then I'm talking to my Ock, Kadar Sahan. You know, I'm talking to him, keeping in contact with him, making sure, you know, he's straight. And um, he handled it very differently, you know. And it's like having this wisdom, not to understanding. That right there is major, y'all, Sharala. I think we don't... I think sometimes we take that for granted, just having this truth, but really you can't because it, it, it's very, it's everything. And the Akadar Sahan, you know, when I talked to him, man, you know, he was handed it like a soldier. He was like, you know, because the same thing happened to Akadar Sahan. Like his power came on, the transformer blew, and the power went back off. First thing Ak said to me was like, man, the most high trying to, you know, test my resolve. Like he already knew what it was. He already knew the situation. Like these devils are testing, you know, the grid being down. So he he wasn't in the same state as I seen the, the world of two dirt, two third Jake at my job. He wasn't in the same state, man. He handled it like you wouldn't even think nothing was going on with him, man. He handled it like a straight soldier. He was like, the man, most high test my resolve. I'm going to push through it. I know why it's going on. And we're going to be all right. I, you know, that's what he was saying to me. And I'm just like, wow, man, look what the truth does for us as a people like like knowing what's going on will put you in a better position than if you don't know what's going on because when you don't know what's going on the fear of the unknown is like you know it drives your fear factor and then when you're in a state of fear you know you make bad mistakes you know you're not you're not in the right spirit versus when you know what's going on you know who you are you know that what the enemy is doing it puts you in a calm state. So when you're in a, a bad situation, you're able to handle it in a in a very, how can I say this? In a very calm, you be in the right spirit to handle the situation to where you don't do nothing foolish or reckless. Like I was about to see that one Jake dude, man. He almost got fired because he's about to hurt somebody because he said his, his house is hot. I was dealing with a, ho a hot house as well. You know, but he wasn't in the state of trying to fight nobody. Uh, man, you wouldn't even know nothing was even going on with Ock, the way he handled that. You know, he just telling the situation. I tell Ock, man, I got him if he, if he need me. And um, that that's why I look at it. This, that's what this truth does for us. So to me, this is like a, a mini version of what Jacob's trouble was to come. Us being in the truth, we're going to handle it way different than these worldly two-third Jakes. Because we know the situation. We know why it's happening. And we have faith that the Lord going to protect us. And that right there is just, it's a world of a difference. So I'm going to go and bring out this right here. And then like the Lord, man, he, he let me see that. And it built more value. The truth is just so valuable to me. And I'm really seeing the value of having the truth. So I tell you, brothers and sisters, don't overlook the truth as if it's like insignificant. Or it's just, you know, whatever, whatever. No, man, this is right here going to save our lives. This this knowledge that we have. So let's go to this right here. Because this, this precept popped in my head majorly during that time. Because I used that. You know, you seen it. I seen that. You know, my own eyes, man. The Let me bring it out. This is Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom... And knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. I witnessed that. The ark was stable during these times. The two-thirds was not. They about to bug out. Man, this devil would have let the light stay out for another week. We was going to see judgment. It was that bad. I almost got into it with somebody. I bumped into somebody um, at the Walmart. They had a whole attitude. You know, I downplayed it. So it didn't escalate. Uh, the ark beyond. Dana got in the wreck and got into it with a with a Jake at the gas station. Cause what I, they told me they was fighting at the gas station. They was fighting over the pumps. You know, I didn't hear nothing about no judgment, but they like people, most people told me they was fighting over the gas at the gas station. We almost had a gas shortage because of the, I guess, the blackouts. 
And you can just see it on Jake's face. Like, I'm at the Quick Trip. I'm at the Walmart. You just look at Jake's face. Like, if you say the wrong thing to Jake, you could lose your life. That's how bad it was up here. And that was just a week. So imagine when they cut these lights out for months. What's going to happen? So this that incident right there is going to bring a lot of judgment to a lot of Yashrallah Israel. Just that, you know, incident. But see, when I looked at the hopeful elect, Kadar Sahan, you wouldn't even know that was going on. You wouldn't, I mean, it was like business as usual to him. He was stable. Uh, we having upright conversation talks. You know, I was saying things. It was boosting my faith, man. I was like, man, Lord God, we're going to be all right. I'm about to do this and do that, and we're going to make it. And I'm like, wow, man, that's the spirit right there, you know? And it just, it, I, and I got to see the difference, man. The Jake, the job, <laughs> if that other person had separated him, he was going to hurt that other Jake because he, he grabbed a drill gun and he said, he said out his mouth he's going to kill that dude. So they had to send dude home because, you know, he about to bug out. <laughs> and I'm looking like, dang, what if they didn't grab dude? And, you know, they kept fussing and, and arguing. He lost his job, probably got jail time because his house is hot. And I noticed Jake can't deal with adversity like that because they're not, they haven't been built up spiritually or mentally to deal with the elements. And I'm looking at this old, and this is old school Jake. He in his 60s, and he acting like a little 12-year-old. Can't handle no adversity. Acting like an Edomite. So I'm like, they're going to do this in the future for a longer period of time. So that, I know right there, he ain't going to make it if he don't change his ways, if he don't wake up. But he's already told me he don't believe in the most high. So he just going to be, you know, to his own lot. So I'm like, dang, dude's going to lose your life because your house is hot. You know, dang, go get a hotel room or something. Like, like it's like he didn't have no flavor, man. That, I don't even like that old school Jake, man. He's very, it's a lot of dudes in my job. They act like Edomites. They're very cool in the Sambo spirit. And it just he didn't show no type of, uh, of Jake flavor to me. He started acting like an Edomite. That's what he did, you know. Then he was going to hurt another Jake, <laughs> you know, because Jake was talking noise to him. And, you know, you know, two Jakes is mad. They get to talking. I think he called him a, a female dog and dude didn't like it. And they was about to bang at the job. You know, people had to separate him. And, it, like, he didn't know that Jake, he didn't want to joke around that day. He was mad that his house was hot, um, his food was spoiled, and they ain't cut the power on they dragging their feet. He kept talking about that all day, that day, like how sorry the 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 city of Toss is, and they really ain't trying to cut the power on. And I'm looking like, had you been in the truth, you would know that. Of course they dragging their feet. This is a, a psyop. This is a program. This is a pilot program to see how you react when they put us in the dark. To see if he was in the truth, he would know that. And he wouldn't have reacted the way he did. He just, he reacted like a child is what he did. You know? And what I'm saying is this, this is like gearing us for Jacob's trouble. That's the first thing that's going to happen. Power going to go out. So this is letting me know, like, me and I, we talking. We're going to get more off-grid stuff. Um, I need to get me a generator. For like, Lord willing, to, if I get some Federal Reserve notes built up, I'm going to get me a generator. And this, like, it gave us a chance to look at. Like, Esau got to look, and so the whole flat, we got to look at things we'll need. Things we can do to soften the blow, make sure I got water, you know, stacked up, supplies, um, flashlights. It just gave us a look at what we need when the next one occurs. Because the next one's going to be for longer. So Esau got to see, we got to see as well, <laughs> devil. And we're going to, you know, be more prepared for your butt next time. So I'm going to go get this right here. This ain't, I just want to give a quick rundown, let you know all the Akim are safe. Um, everybody's power's back on. Um, everything seemed to be going back to normal. They still like fixing stuff up. Um, still tree limbs everywhere all over the place. They still ain't came and got that. But we're pretty much doing fine. And that was just a little bit of that fire. You know, Yahabasha allowed Esau to cut the power out and test the resolve of the hopeful leg, which hopeful leg made it through that like it was nothing. Like, it was straight nothing. Two-thirds, another week, two-thirds have been at each other's neck. I'm telling you, I already been at each other's neck. So, hey, they better get in this truth while they can. Plus, your power out, you know, can't charge your phone, TV off. 
Hey, you just gonna be stuck with whatever knowledge you got. There ain't no let me log on and get a lesson or none of that. That's why we say build yourself up. Edification going to building up. Build yourself up in the spirit. So when the devil implements his little diabolical plans, you're ready for it. You're not gonna be panicking and oh no, I can't do this. And what I'm gonna do? They woe is me, spirit. They won't hit you. You be like, I, psh, I knew you was gonna do that, devil. You're gonna open up, go back to your, your pages of your actual Bible and Get to reading and get you some comfort, you know, and watch out. Because I think if they do that again, they probably going to bring some military next time. They probably going to be the military bring coming in on a, on a blackout. That's just what I'm just speaking through the spirit right now on that one. Because they're going to do it again. So check it out. This is uh, Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 2 and 5. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. That was adversity right there. You know, uh, certain brothers more than others. My lights didn't go out. You know, the ox did. So he he had more adversity than, than we did. And we all dealt with it. Because I just had to deal with the elements when I went outside the house. Like, I had to go to Walmart to get things. Uh, go to Quick Trip to get gas. And Jake was out there acting a dang fool, man. Straight up. And it was packed everywhere you went. Because only certain places had power. So I like when I went to go get gas, I probably had to wait in the line like 15, 20 minutes sometimes just to get gas. It was that bad, y'all, Sharala. That bad. It was that packed. And people had attitudes. People were not happy during that time. But hey, that was that that furnace of adversity. You know, that's the Lord testing our resolve. And hey, we gotta be that gold. You know, to be gold, you can't let the fire burn you up. Don't be no wood. Be that gold. You know, and that's what the truth does. It builds you up. So we can be that precious gold. So we can make it through that adversity, man. The Lord going to try people. You don't just want that lip service. Oh, yeah, you believe in me. Oh, you said it, you prayed. Okay, let me do something to you. Let me chastise you a little bit. And then we'll see if you're still in the truth. That's how the Lord do this. And all of us going to be ultimately tested when the MOTB roll out. Because when the MOTB roll out, it's going to be, oh, you going to get no lights. You don't get no water, no gas, no food. You don't get nothing. Unless you go get that micro CHIP. That's how the devil going to do us. So this is a little taste of how, you know, what he going to take away in order to try to funnel and, and force you. Like the scripture says, he calls of all. He's going to try to cause you and force you to take the, the micro CHIP. And so that you won't be no good to your hot shot. See, that's his way of testing to see if you really for the truth or not. It's easy for us to say that now. Why we got power, water, uh, food, little jobs, everything we need. It's easy to say that now. But the Lord want to see, are you going to say that when I allow these devils to take everything from you? Is you still going to hold strong? Because the ones that hold strong through that, that's the ones I want. Why? Because it proves that you have faith. You believe that I'm going to make it through this. That I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to protect you. You believe that. That's the Lord looking at. A lot of people say that, and the same thing when they uh, one nine situation rolled out. Everybody like, oh, I'm this, and I go to church, and I believe in Jesus. They came around, they went, they ran to go get that thing, man. They ran to go get it. So we got to look, it's going to be the same scenario, you know, as we move forward. That great temptation. You know, we got to be built up to resist it. And that, that come with time. That's daily. You know, you got to build yourself up. Um, build your faith up to where when it comes, you can get that devil a definite no. I'm not taking that. And they be like, okay, well, no power for you, no water for you. Be like, all right, whatever, I'll rough it, man. You know, Lord gonna look out for me, man. It might be rough. That's why I say, uh, it's good to do a fast, go a couple of days without eating. That way, you know, if you want to dare to without eating, they gonna put you in panic mode. You're like, I did this before, like, shh, it's nothing new. You know, so I just want to do a quick follow up. Everything's starting to get back to normal in Tulsa. Um, all the brothers are safe. The Lord looked out. Um, faith was was like, hey, was was, was built up during that time. Cause me just seeing the op and how he handled it, man. I was like, man, hopefully, Lek is really strong. Like the Lord is really truly building us up, man. All the Upright conversation came out of us talking. It was just, it was so spiritual, so spiritual, man. It just, the, these little things, these little battles build us up for the big battle that's to come. 
they MOTB rolling out. That's their big battle. You know, so cherish these things, Yashrala, and look for the victory that we got through our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Like, we will beat this devil. We will. <laughs> and it's showing already. So with that, I, mean, I hope this has been edifying. I hope it's been encouraging. I want to say, Kwame Yashrala, Detail by Bob, Shalom.